Hey everyone, welcome back to Machining Minutes with me, Ben. In the last video, we machined op one of this bottle opener. Today, we're gonna make some soft jaws to be able to hold our part, machine it, and put all the features in on the backside. So stick around, because I'm gonna show you how we set up our soft jaws for this part, how we machine them, and then use our cam automation from Toolpath to machine op two. First, let's work on getting our soft jaws loaded up on our vise. I'll show you exactly how that goes over here. So we've got op one finished. Now we have to figure out how to hold this part. So what I have here, a vise, these aluminum dovetail jaws. We have our zero point vise right here. I can click this little button and with a little bit of pressure, this just pops right out. There's a feature in the vise right here that spring loaded always pushing against that dovetail to kind of seed it properly. So I'm gonna take these brand new jaws. I'm gonna pop them on. There we go. Pop this guy off. Put this guy back on. So those guys are locked in place. And I have these two eighth inch aluminum spacers that I take, put together, put them right in between the jaws, tighten the jaws down like that. And in my model, I have this vise with the jaws, the right height and everything. And then I also model that gap in place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our part and we're gonna machine a pocket. Looks just like the geometry of the part. Make a pocket, pop it in place. We'll machine all the features. And the nice thing is because we're machining the soft jaws in place, we already know exactly where this, this part is going to be placed. That's super helpful when programming we don't have to worry about the work coordinate system changing on us or anything like that. All right, next let's get this vise set up in the machine. So here's our zero point plate. And what this lets us do is quickly add a vise in any one of these locations because we have the zero point plate and all of our vices modeled up in Fusion 360. We know where everything sits in a very accurate way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our, our ratchet here, loosening this guy lets us pull up these little plugs. And now I'm gonna pull our riser and vise assembly, get those located, and then all I have to do is tighten this right back up. Now we're all set up. We're gonna run our machining operation for the soft jaws to make those pockets. Take our spacers out, and we'll run op two that Toolpath gave us in this soft jaw. Okay, let's talk about soft jaws. So I'll show you how I did it. Here's Fusion. We have our op one set up here. Now this was all generated by Toolpath. So I pulled in a model with the soft jaws. And then in the design environment, so I just created a sketch, hid my part, and then did a cut extrude down to the face. The other thing I tend to do with soft jaws is I always create this little body. Um, and I'll show you exactly why in a moment. It's really just to be able to constrain my um, 2D adaptive. This body really has no use other than just to create some geometry to select. So let's hop back into the manufacturer tab. And then here's the setup that I've created for our soft jaws. So I'll click on bodies. There's that body that we created. Let's do a 2D adaptive clearing. And now when I go to select my geometry, I just select the contour of that, that body that we created, quarter inch, click OK. And now we have a really nice constrained 2D adaptive. And then all I have to do is add a little 2D contour to clean everything up. All right, there we go. We're ready to post this out to the machine and start cutting. Moment of truth. We got our part, got our soft jaws. Let's check it out. I'd say it's a pretty good fit. So anytime we do soft jaws, we make sure that we have our torque wrench out, set it to the right torque setting, and once it clicks, we know we're good, and then all I have to do is tap it down. All right, let's take a look at OP2 that Toolpath helped this program. So I'm going to activate it, and we can see that we've got our rest machining stock there. So initially, it wants to do a 3D adaptive. That looks fine. Then we do a facing operation, clean up the contours, use a flat toolpath for that face. That looks fine. Use our quarter inch for that pocket. 
Uh, it looks like this eighth inch end mill for this adaptive clearing isn't doing anything. I think for now I'm just going to suppress it. Finishing the floor, that looks fine. We do some adaptive roughing with a 16th inch end mill, and then we finish the floor and hit the chamfers. And it does look like our chamfer is not doing a great job around the outside of this part here. So let's uh, take a look at that real quick and see if we just have some weird geometry. So what I would do in this case is usually I just kind of duplicate the operation and I'll go to edit it. I'm going to kill all the geometry and then just select this guy. And our chamfer tip offset, I think, could be a little bit lower. Great. That looks good. Um, let's go ahead and simulate this real quick. Let's get this sent out to the machine and start making some chips. Let's take a look and see how it did. Here's our completed part. Overall, I'm very happy with this. People ask how, how much of Toolpath is gonna program my part, and it really just depends. Depends on the complexity, just a lot of different factors. Sometimes it gets 100%, which I, I have a video on a, um, a business card holder that Toolpath absolutely crushes. And in this case, you know, we had a couple of missed contours and facing issues and some pocket stuff, but this got me to a part a lot faster than if I had to program it by hand. Well, that's gonna wrap us up for today. I had a lot of fun machining this bottle opener and showing you guys how Toolpath works, the cam automation. I'm curious, what do you guys think of this cam automation stuff? Do you think it's useful? Do you think it would help accelerate your programming? Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe. Make sure you try out Toolpath. We have a 14 day free trial that you can hop on anytime. Take full advantage of tool recommendation engine, cam automation, estimating. Go give it a try. We've got a bunch of videos on it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next Machining Minutes video.